Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu, and I'm so excited to welcome back for the third time now one of my favorite and longtime clients, Meredith Rice. She's been on the show before to talk about starting a fitness journey and her fitness and weight loss journey, her half marathon that she ran and her run Disney weekend, and now she's back to talk about her second half marathon and what she has planned next in her running journey. So definitely go stop by the show notes to share your insights and tips for Meredith. And I hope you enjoy listening to our interview today. So welcome back to the podcast, Meredith. I'm glad to have you as a guest again today. Yay. Every day with Catherine is a good day. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Well, I've been loving this because we haven't been having regular sessions lately. This is like my excuse to get updates from you. So I'm excited to have you back. <laughs> I know it's, it's been a while since an actual session, but we'll be in a session together on Friday, yoga for runners for your birthday or your I'm anniversary. Excited. I'm yes. going to call it, I'm going to call it your birthday because flex, that's what I call her little <laughs> armadillo mascot. Flex is my man. <laughs> See, I know I feel bad. I, I haven't officially like put that on his birth certificate yet. So maybe I need to do that. <laughs> Flex the Tex. The Texan. Five years is a little too long to go without having an official name. So. <laughs> so last time we spoke, you did a recap from Run Disney and you were getting ready to run your second half marathon. So can you give us an update on how that went and any like Well, just in general, how it went, I know you have the video on, on Mm -hmm. your video blog series, but then maybe some like lessons learned from second time around for the listeners. Sure. Yeah. It's been kind of a running frenzy for me. I've just been signing up for all this, these things on my runner's high. I probably shouldn't, you know, uh, put me on registration sites right after these races because I get a little too excited. (laughs) But um, no, my second half marathon was the inaugural Silo District Half Marathon in Waco, Texas. Fixer Upper fans should know it. Um, Chip and Joanna Gaines hosted it and Chip actually ran the full marathon as well as um, Jimmy Don who makes the medal signs signs on the sh- for the show. Mm-hmm. He ran the 5K. He was the 5K team captain. And Clint Harp, who makes the furniture a lot of times for Joanna, it, uh, was the half marathon team captain. So he ran the half a lot faster than me, I must <laughs> add. But it was all in support of the Brave Like Gabe Foundation, which is after the professional runner Gabe, who Chip met in New York in October. So they planned this thing in like five months or something wow. crazy <laughs> like that. Yeah. And all the proceeds went to that. And it, I think it ended up being a quarter of a million dollars that they raised for wow. her foundation, which was awesome. And what that foundation is, is just um, in support of rare cancer research. And she's actually hosting a 5K or she did host a 5k this past weekend um, for that same for that same purpose and i'm actually going to be a virtual runner for that race so that's exciting very cool but very cool as far as the race goes i mean it was the first it was the first time that they'd hosted it and um, like i said they planned it in like 5 months so i was expecting some hiccups but actually for the first go round. I thought it was pretty smooth. I mean, it was hot, but you can't really control that. That's Texas. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and afterwards I couldn't find the chocolate milk that the race guide said they had, but I mean, that could just be my directional skills. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, but they had these huge sugar cookies from the bakery, which were great. And it was, it was just a fun atmosphere. A lot of people's first races and and uh, Chip ran in his tool belt 
which he had a really cool story about that. But it, it was just a really fun time. And I encourage anyone to, to go check that out. If they're a fixer upper fan at all, they'll, they'll really like it. They had the shop open after the race and the bakery open after the race. So there was a victory cupcake or two. I love that. So, so they're going to continue on after this year. It's not just a one year thing then. Yes, that's their plan. Mm -hmm. At least from, um, the interview that they did with Chip, he's not so sure he's going to come back and do the full marathon again, but he said <laughs> he'll definitely run some distance again and they're going to host it again. Uh, they're just not sure of the date yet for next year, but they cool. said pencil them in. So I think this is going to be an annual thing. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll be my legacy race. See, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, that's really cool. So that was awesome. So any like, differences you felt personally between the first half you ran and the second half you ran? Well, I mean, the entertainment stops were a lot different <laughs> <laughs> from, from Disney to, to Waco, Texas. Um, there, there were more things to distract me in, in Disney World, um, but I actually felt really, really good. Like I felt like I found my run all day pace. I could just I wasn't as, um, which I really felt good during the Disney World um, half that I did as well, but I don't know. I just, I felt really, really comfortable with the pace I was at, which probably means I should have gone faster, but I did, <laughs> but I did PR. Granted, I didn't, you know, stop for characters and stuff, so I probably sure. ended up going <laughs> slower, but no, I just enjoyed it. It was a nice easy 13.1 miles <laughs> that can be <laughs> did you ever think that you would be saying that <laughs> that phrase easy 13.1 miles no <laughs> I needed to use the bathroom at the end but that was about it that was about the worst part of it but, See? so yeah, yeah for people that that haven't listen to your other episodes and, and met you this is like a new journey for you this running journey You're, you have That little sound means we are halfway through 15 minutes. So if you are going for that out and back walk, you want to turn around now because Meredith is more than just a client to me. She's also a friend. So we are going to get a little Gabby and go over 15 minutes, but I hope you enjoy these insights and let's get back to the interview. I've been running half marathons your whole life. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, actually, like if you would have said like I'd be doing all these five Ks, I probably wouldn't have believed you a year or two ago. So, I mean, it is, it is a very big deal um, for me personally doing this just because I was always heavier and um, I used running first of all as a way to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I decided, you know, give it an, as an excuse to go to Disney and then it was just from there, it just became a running bug. So I don't know. I love races. I guess I'm so competitive that it's like, it's a fun atmosphere for me to be in, yeah. which is, which is dangerous as well, because now, as I said in the beginning, I'm registered for all these races. So. <laughs> there you go. I, oh, one thing I must know, I did hop in a car and drive six hours almost Right after the race, I showered, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Got some food and then was right in the car. So um, I did bring my foam roller, but I was a little bit more sore for this one compared to Disney World where I kind of felt like I walked it off, walked it, sure. I walked all my soreness out. So. Sure. So yeah, so people are able to like schedule in some time after their race, especially if they're traveling to try to, try yeah, to walk get walking and foam rolling. Yeah, walk around the shop a little bit if you if you can if you have the time cuz Yeah. That'll get you. <laughs> so sometimes people run a half marathon and then they say they're never going to run a full. <laughs> but what do, what, what's your opinion on this? Uh, earlier this year, I would say um when people were like uh, Oh, you're running you're running a marathon and I was like, "Oh, only a half. I'm only half crazy." <laughs> But uh, now I have all these plans. Probably, I blame it on the Boston Marathon. I don't know. that. I just thought that was so inspiring. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, I follow someone on social media that is a, what they call a six star finisher. Boston is one of the six world major marathons. And if you finish all six, that's its own special title. And only, I think at the time that I was looking at it, only a little over 3000 people in the world have done it. And so I was like, well, you know, dream big. Yeah, no, I I don't do anything small. So (laughs) of course I started looking into that as well. So before we go to the marathon, because one of your, one of your goals too, that maybe we need to get some audience, you know, or listener, I guess, feedback on Mm -hmm. is the, is your next goal with your half marathon. So what's something that you've been working on that you could share with us? (gasps) Oh gosh. Again, my, um, the old chancellor of my alma mater, his, um, main mantra, if you will, was dream no little dreams. That's what I feel like I'm living right now. (laughs) What it is, is the run 50 challenge, which I'm going to do a half marathon or more, just depending on which race sounds, you know, interesting to me. Half marathon, marathon or more in each of the 50 states. So I've got two down, 48 to go. (laughs) Yep. Which I was joking with Catherine, you know, by after September, when I run the Disneyland Paris half marathon weekend, I'll have run in just as many countries as I, as I had States, which is crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy, but impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've kind of got a list of, of half marathons I'm, I'm looking at, um, but none are really like set in stone. So if, Anybody out there, if there's a half marathon in your home state, or if you know of one that you're like, she has to do this half marathon, please let me know. Comment on this podcast and let me know. Well, I'll definitely have to let, yeah, I'll give you updates on what people say because I'm interested. Any states that you have marathons you found that you're like really excited about checking out? Well, yes. (laughs) Of course, Hawaii and Alaska, because those are just Mm. vacation destinations as they are. But there are some other ones, like there's a Chick-fil-A half marathon in Georgia, which I love (laughs) Chick-fil-A. Then there's um, one, the Garmin Oz half marathon in Kansas, which is themed after the Wizard of Oz, of course, which I thought was really cool. Um, There's the, of course being the chocolate fan that I am, the Hershey half marathon in Pennsylvania. Mm. That <laughs> just, oh, I just, yeah, that's a must. Um, then there's one in Washington, which I found interesting. It's called Beat the Blurch. And it's like this funny little character that eats cupcakes and is like, um, you know, He's not a sloth, but he kind of has that same sort of attitude. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I don't know. I, I find that very entertaining. So I I think that one as well is maybe the Kentucky Derby is up there as well. There's a Kentucky Derby um, half marathon. I think it's called, oh no, that's a different one, but Kentucky Derby would be interesting. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of cool races. I mean, I used to get the runner's world and in the back, there'd be all the, all the races and have, have them checked off, but it's been a while. So now I gotta, <laughs> I like this list. <laughs> yeah. There's one called the slacker half marathon too. Maybe that, maybe that should be my first stop there in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll get people to share. We'll have to get people to write in some of their favorites just to make sure the list is complete. Right. Yeah. I mean, I did some research on this, but you know, I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss the good ones. So I, I, my list is only as complete as kind of Google, Google is, you know, I looked Mm -hmm. at the medals, I looked at people's thoughts and reviews, but I would love to, you know, the more information, the better. I want to pick the right race. Yeah. Especially if you're traveling, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. So we chatted a little bit about the marathon and that you actually are are working on becoming fully crazy and running a full marathon. Oh, Lordy. (laughs) Which marathon are you looking at? (laughs) Well, in line with that six star finisher um, that I was talking about before, the sign up for one of the six 
world major marathons came up, I would say like a week or two after I started looking at it. So pretty much as the first one that I saw, I jumped on, especially when you find out the location, it's the London marathon. And <laughs> I studied abroad in London. I first started talking to my husband in London. I love London. It's it's a very special place. And I figured, you know, what better place for my first full marathon? But let me tell you, to enter what they call the ballot entry, which is like a lottery system, you know, mm -hmm. um, it is a non -re reimbursable, I think it's like $50 or something. Mm -hmm. But if you win the lottery, so to speak, then that's all you pay. Got but it. if you, but if you don't, you know, you don't have a, you don't have a place. And I was looking at the odds of that and it was like less than 4% last year. And <sighs> they had a record number of entries again this year. So it's probably even less this year. And I was, I didn't even enter the lottery because I know my luck and that's, that just wouldn't do well for me. <laughs> so I looked at some other ways that I could do it and, um, found charity entries, like I could fundraise um, and run for a charity, mm -hmm. which I thought was an even better option because then, you know, you're, you're not just supporting your dream. You can help someone live theirs or, or fund research or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. There are so many good charities out there. So I applied for a couple and the first one that I heard back from, I was, if, if I was lucky enough to be on their team was, was going to be the one I chose. And, and I heard back from a UK charity called Get Kids Going. Mm -hmm. And basically what it's about is um, it supports sport and mobility for do disabled children. Sorry, I kind of stumbled over that, but um, basically it's, you know, sports wheelchairs, even wheelchairs in general are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And, um, they're looking at providing that for kids to, to get them, to get them going, to get their freedom back. And, and for those that are interested in sports, give them a chance to compete. So I thought that was an awesome cause, you know, I'll run for those that can't. And mm -hmm. in the hopes that, you know, by, by running for this charity, you know, I'm not only running for my dream, but I can maybe get a kid on the journey towards their dream Yeah, no, of, finish, really... of finishing a race. So that, mm -hmm. that's who I'm going to fundraise for. That's awesome. So how, how much do you have to raise and how are you going about doing that? <laughs> well, um, that was, that was one of the reasons I went with the UK charity. They, they were a little bit lower than some of the U S charities that I found. Mm -hmm. Um, not that that was the most important factor, but, um, I'm looking to raise uh, about 2000 pounds, which converts to about 2,600 U S dollars. Okay. Um, and I was looking at doing it a few different ways. I'm open to suggestions on that as well, though. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever, you know, cause whatever people find most valuable, if they'd rather just donate or they, you know, want, want something tied with it. I'm not sure. Um, but I also thought about, um, I saw a lot of London marathon runners attempting Guinness book world records, um, while they were there, which what that would look like is, fastest marathon dressed as you know a cupcake <laughs> or something you know yeah. just something just something really fun uh that that could get attention and and just could be you know fun mm -hmm. so i may go for a world record who knows we'll see what <laughs> what i can what i can dress as you know so i'm looking at that and i'm also looking at getting my my company involved as well oh cool very cool. Well, you'll have to let us know when the fundraising page is up and we'll, we can link it through the show notes and all that good stuff. So yes, hopefully I'll have it up tonight or tomorrow. So fancy, fancy. Check oh, it out. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. 
Well, I'm excited for you, Meredith, and I've been loving following <laughs> your journey. <laughs> I knew you would be excited. <laughs> this is the day that Catherine dreamed of five years ago. <laughs> I know. I can't believe. I mean, I'm, I'm very I can't believe she got me to do the princess. <laughs> And so now she's probably like, oh my gosh, I started. I mean, you say that, but I, I knew, I knew you wanted to do it at some level. So I knew there was, it was going to happen at some, at some point. I just had to be patient. And <laughs> yeah. Who knows guys, maybe, maybe, um, maybe Catherine and I can do Boston together. A girl can dream. Amazing. You have to send positive vibes my way. Cause I'm, I'm running a, race this weekend. I, I'm a, I can't even believe I'm mentioning it because whenever I mention it, I feel like I'm just going to jinx myself. I'm so superstitious. But, <laughs> well, I don't uh, think, I don't think Catherine needs any good vibes, <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, yeah. you know what happens before your race? I have like five different parts of each leg that are supposedly about to have an injury. So <laughs> Yeah, well, and your stomach is doing a tap dance. And, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and, your, and your mind is going, you know, <laughs> If, if, if my legs went as fast as my mind does, we'd be set. We'd be setting world records already. Maybe they'll be able to measure that at some point, and then we can hey. be competing for that. That would be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, and if, and if I happen to um, raise this and get to do this, then that'll be my third country. So I, I better get on these states because these countries are winning. I know, right? I know. Well, you're always welcome to come out to uh, California, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, that fitness retreat. So tempting. Hopefully the Disneyland races will be back and yeah. then, I can, uh, then I can, you know, double whammy, have a double excuse. Yeah. Disneyland and Catherine. See? Best of both worlds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, I, mean I could see Catherine dressed up as Tinkerbell. I'm just... <laughs> Well, you know what? I mean, I, I, I'm making this joke, but California, they sometimes they have that rumor, right? They're trying to become their own country. So who knows? By the time <laughs> Disney gets their race back, it might be another country. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, four and two. It's okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Meredith, I've really enjoyed catching up with you. And I'll put this in the show notes. But what's the best way for people to stay on stay in touch with your journey? Sure. If they want to see my running journey and I, you know, I throw a couple things, other things in there, you know, life and, <laughs> you know, lost toenails and fun cats, you know, but it's my YouTube channel and it's called Rice Rice Runner. Awesome. Awesome. I've been enjoying it. It's fun. And <laughs> my husband is very impressed by your videography skills. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think I won him over on that Thanksgiving video. Any video yes. with food in it, I usually get more subscribers, which is fine with me. We'll, we'll have food in every, every episode if we need to. I love it. Well, thanks again, Meredith. And uh, yeah, looking forward to keep following you and cheering you on to that marathon. Yes. I, I'm really excited. I'm also a little nauseous, but <laughs> you know, it'll have be good. Of time. <laughs> Yeah, you say that now, but we'll, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. So. Awesome. Well, I'll chat with you later. All right. Thanks, Catherine. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine, and you may or may not have noticed that Meredith said that we would be working out together on Friday, and you can work out with us, too. As part of the Fit Armadillo five-year anniversary celebration, we have some $5 fitness classes that we're doing. These are live small group workouts. You can get all the details by heading to the show notes or going to fitarmadillo.com slash five years, where that slash is the number five, Y-R-S. Hope to see you in class on Wednesday or Friday. Thanks for listening. Bye.